Hi, this is Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products. I am playing with some Emerald Creek embossing powders today. Look at these colors. I mean, actually, I'll bring a few more out here. It just, I don't know, it just makes me want to do something beautiful and amazing with them. And I had this idea. I've got this painting that I'm working on here. And it doesn't even all fit in the screen. This is the painting. And I've been using uh, all these grids and squares to kind of like show what you can do when you just limit yourself to grids and squares. And I guess grids are squares. Ha! Well, anyway, and I use this one and these two. I like these two. And I use this. And and this little guy so this whole painting it's been going on for a while now it's 20 by 20 and i've used all square or very geometric shapes so what i thought i wanted to do was create some kind of something using some embossing powders and that's what i thought i would show you because first of all i've not ever used the embossing powders on canvas i know they're going to do great on canvas and I also am going to use soft gel gloss as the medium instead of um, like ink, embossing ink, because it works great with them. And then I've got a heat gun too. So without further ado, let's get going. I got to thinking, you know, maybe it would be fun to do some numbers instead of just some, um, some more squares. So... I might have to do a seven because, you know, I always do sevens on everything because that's my lucky number. So let's start with a seven. The gel medium is just in the cap here, so I'm going to use the cap and I'm going to um, get it on here, kind of pounce it on and off just like I normally would if I was using a paint or anything else. So we're going to do this number seven. I'm going to pounce it on here. I'm going to lift this up. And I think I'm going to go with this coral color just because it's so pretty. I almost can't even see my seven right now. I know it's there somewhere. It's in that vicinity. Wow, there's some bigger hunks inside this. Who knew? Anyway, um, I gotta grab a piece of paper because I forgot to do that. And I'm gonna dump it on my paper off screen because it's just too big to show that whole process. But basically, I'm gonna dump it just so I can save this and put it back in the container. I'll have to say, I like this seven. I thought it, the powder was gonna stick around here um, in other places, but it didn't actually. It just came right off. The hardest thing is handling the, the size of the painting and getting it on the paper and everything, but I did manage to save it. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, I think put some, some more little squares around here just because I want to incorporate, I'm, I'm not going to actually heat it yet. I want to incorporate a few other elements of the same color before I do that. So I'm going to get a little bit more. And I'm just going in between these squares. Not so, because I don't want to get like the whole square. I just want to get this little in between part. And I can actually see it right now, so that's good. <laughs> Better than with the seven. All right, so I'm gonna lift this up, and get my paper right here, and maybe you can watch it if it doesn't go too airborne on me. And then I just sort of hit it a little bit like this. Now see, let me show you. There's a little bit of extra right there, and I'm just gonna wipe that off because I don't really want that on there. So there we go, another little bit. This is a piece I'm doing for a fundraiser for a local organization. And um, 
I actually am kind of happy with it so far. I like it. I like it. I'm digging these colors for sure. I'm going to do some more over here. I might just do a whole square over here in this color. Or maybe I'll do it up here. That might be interesting. Maybe up here. I just, I got to thinking about it. And you know how it looks so cool when you emboss something and it gets that raised, that cool glossy look. I thought, I think I would like to have the juxtaposition of my painting with some glossy parts and I have these brand new colors from Emerald Creek and I was really just dying to use them what can I say um, once again I got a little extra there a few other colors too. I think I want to use some of this fantastic teal because it's really pretty. Let me tell you what this color is first of all. It's called fluorescent red orange and it'd be pretty nice I say. Really pretty color. This is this one. It's called candy turquoise. I think this would be a good one to use. I want some little baby squares. Let's do little baby squares within another set of squares. How's that? So we'll do it just like that. Get my sponge back. Now we'll have to see how this, ooh, I don't know. I think I might have used too much of the gel medium on this. We'll see. We shall see. Possibly too much. You know what though? I like it. I, um, I did use a little too much, but I think it's looking uh, kind of cool actually. And I do like it. So I'm going to leave it as is. This color is called Ironstone Red. And what I think I want to do is put some gloss on this square. So you don't have to use a stencil for everything. <laughs> right? And I'm going to just kind of just go right around here. And what I want to do is have outside of this really glossy but then have the inside of it kind of um, kind of like it's distressed and worn away so that's the plan anyway you know I might mix a little bit of this um, this fluorescent in here too which means I'm probably going to end up wasting this or I have to put it in an envelope and save it for later because it'll be two different colors but that's okay. Ooh, this pretty, this iron red or whatever it's called, it's really pretty. New color for me. Pretty. All right, so let's get this shaken off. Okay, now here I missed the edge here a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is get a skewer and then just rough this up so that it kind of it makes it look like oh yeah I meant to do that so right now I'm going to turn the heat gun on and I will emboss all right so here we are the only one unexpected thing happened is where this um, fluorescent pink was, it kind of went white when I embossed it. It was the oddest thing. So I'm going to get a little bit of my golden fluorescent magenta, which was the color I used on there, and I'm going to add a little bit more um, paint right on top of the embossing because I was a little bit surprised and I didn't really want to lose that color. So. I'm just going to add it right on top of there. Who knows? Maybe it was a little too wet under there, whatever. 
But the main thing is, is I am just thrilled with how this gives the piece some dimensionality that it did not have before. And it gives the painting this kind of, wow, how'd you do that kind of look, you know? So, um, I don't know if we're finished yet here. There's probably some more touch-ups I will do because I have a hard time stopping once I get going with painting. And I'm gonna add some of my colors right on top of the embossing. I think I'm gonna get a little bit of this. This is this transparent iron oxide. Look how pretty it looks on top of just part of that embossed area. I like that a lot. It just gives it, as I said, one more dimension. I often go back with my hands like this anyway and rub a little bit of this around. It gives the pieces just a, a nice glow, I think. And um, I don't know. I think helps blend it a little bit. I don't do it everywhere, but just here and there. So here we are for the moment, and we shall see. I may stop or I may keep going on, but I mainly wanted to show you how you can emboss right on top of a stretch canvas and then keep going with your painting process because I think it's just one more way to get some dimension with your piece, and I am loving the fact that embossing powders are back and that they're so cool. Love, love, love. Thanks for watching.